Hello, hello, this is Sonny Melendrez, and welcome to the positive side of the radio spectrum. You found it, the Sonny Melendrez Show, where every week we strive to bring you entertainment and inspiration through storytelling, fascinating guests, exclusive celebrity interviews, and it's all delivered with lots of enthusiasm. And I cannot wait for you to meet my very special guest this week, Laura Wellington. You're going to love her. And as always, we're brought to you by Ideal Precision Roofing, serving San Antonio, Bernie, and the Texas Hill Country. And you know, when you call Ideal, you know that you're in good hands. First of all, it's so easy. You make the call, you suspect maybe you've got hail damage, or maybe you're just needing a new roof. They'll come out, give you a free inspection, and if necessary, contact your insurance company and get the ball rolling to get you a brand new roof. And there's one thing that people say all the time when Ideal comes and takes care of it. Usually it takes like one or two days. They'll say, it's like they were never here. And Ideal is an Owens Corning Platinum Preferred Contractor. That's a designation given to only the top 5% of roofers in the country. So when it comes to roofing, remember the name, Ideal Precision Roofing. Call 210-485-1553. That's 210-485-1553. Or visit IdealPrecisionRoofing.com and tell them that Sonny Melendrez sent you. And now, on with the show. Sunny Radio, SunnyRadio.com Laura Wellington is a TEDx speaker a successful media and technology entrepreneur, an award-winning television creator, best-selling author of Be Careful What You Wish For, a major media blogger, and media entertainment technology consultant. Wow, what a joy it is to welcome Laura Wellington. (laughs) Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Oh, great to have you here. Uh, Let's start out by finding out exactly what it was like when you were a child in in the view of your future did you at an early age did you show uh, creative tendencies to writing uh and doing things like that yes um ever since i was very little even probably around the age of five i was showing creative tendencies writing also drawing um creating characters um, you know, formulating stories. My father tells me that um, it was normal for him to come home from work to see me covered in paper. And <laughs> I would not only be entrenched in it, but I would stick it on me with tape. And so um, I think there you go. <laughs> it, was, it was in the cards. When you, like say, became a teenager, did you continue that, that love yeah. of writing, et cetera? Yeah, I did. I loved reading. I loved all of the classics. Um, and then I had a, uh, in eighth grade, I had a wonderful teacher who, um, he was very supportive in, um, in, you know, my writing and allowing me to write in the way that I needed to write. Um, in the sense that I never wanted to show my work until it was completely finished in my eyes. And he was very supportive of that. And I have to say, it was um, that support that really cemented um, the, the, the thought that I would write in, in my future. I didn't know if I would only write, but that definitely was going to be a part of my life. I just loved to connect and, and explore words and story. And I think You know, every human being on this planet has a story. Everything is a story. And so to be able to tell it in a way that people relate to truly is, it's a gift. It's also an art and a craft. And um, so as much, you know, it's funny because so many people today, authors, um, you know, they see other writers and, you know, people are blogging and this and that and the other thing. And you know, um, they may take offense to the fact because it is a craft, but you know, the other side of that too is 
Yes, it is. But, but it's also a wonderful means of expression for opinion and thoughts and, you know, little tidbits that may make the difference for, for, you know, anyone or everyone. So, you know, I think I really applaud people who put pen to paper, so to speak, in any way, shape or form. And in many ways, it's, it's therapeutic, don't you think? It is so therapeutic. And that's why I said, you know, earlier two minutes ago that writing my new book was um, emotionally difficult um, because, and in the same time, because it was so emotionally difficult, it was extremely therapeutic and you don't get one without the other. So, yeah, I agree. Do you find that uh, it's a lot easier now uh, because you were, you were writing before the internet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot easier now. It's a lot easier to get more you know, your thoughts, because you get, a, you know, obviously stories come to me, you know, I have a myriad of thoughts, you know, every day, like we all do. Um, but it just gets the articles out that I write quicker. Um, I get to touch upon more topics. And I also get to explore different areas. Um, and and I, I, I really enjoy doing that in my life. Um, I think it's just, um, you know, we're multi- faceted creatures. So I, I, I don't think that we should ever stay stuck. And I certainly, I, I don't even know the meaning of that word. <laughs> I agree. I'm, I'm, right, there. I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> you write every day, Laura? Yes. Every day. Every day. Um, whether it be a few lines or, um, or more, I do. I'm driven. And, you know, frankly, the few days that I don't, let's just say there's a period because I'm working on something else that um, I'm not writing. I do feel it by, let's say, the third or fourth day that I have to go back and write because it is just such a part of my soul. So, yeah, I do. I understand. I understand completely. Um, you became, you have five kids. Yeah. Yeah. And you became a, a widow at, at an early age in your 30s. Yeah. 35. Yeah. Yeah. My husband, he passed away when um, he was 40. We had um, three years of him suffering with cancer. Um, he had very two very rare forms of cancer. And um, he left behind um, of the legacy of, of four children. And, um, and so my children have, you know, they, it, it was an enormous responsibility to raise them by myself, but I also feel it was an enormous gift because had I not had them, um, I think I would have been lost, which may sound crazy to some people because, yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of, you know, um, ingenuity and energy. Um, but I wouldn't have traded them being a part of my life then um, for anything or now. Um, so yeah, I have four. And so, so my husband passed away. Um, my oldest child at that point was nine. And, um, so I had a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, a five-year-old and a three-year-old at that point. So I really was a young mom. I was, I was, you know, I was really very young too. I look back, I'm like, oh my God, but, um, I was young to have that type of responsibility. And I gave up a ton of my, um, my life in one way um, because of it, but I got so much more life in return. And it didn't, doesn't mean, mean that every moment was easy or I knew what I was doing or, because no one does. Um, but especially under those conditions. Plus I had at that point two failing businesses to turn around. Um, so I had to do all of it. And I think in some ways that was the blessing because I had so much to do that um, I, I became, it became my education for today because when I look at myself today and the person I grew into, that would not have been possible without going through what I went through. And um, I think that's the beauty of it. If you have to find the silver lining, that's the beauty. Plus, 
you know, today I'm in a very proud of who my children have become. You know, my son, my oldest son is a resident in, um, he's doing his residency in orthopedic surgery. He's married to a beautiful woman. You know, my second works at Mayo Clinic in technology. My third is in medical school down at um, GW. My fourth just graduated UC San Diego and she works in environmental policy. So, and we're a close family and we're all very happy and healthy. And so, my gosh, if that's all I did in my life, I, 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 exactly. I think I think that's the, the best you could ask for, right? So, yep. you know, anything else I do is gravy. And I think that's the other side of it is I'm not fr- frightened of life because, um, and I'm not tr- frightened of venture or trying something new because I went through the worst in my eyes, right? So, so that sort of puts everything else in, in, in pretty clear perspective. And you made it. And I made it. And I made it. And I made it. You know, um, and I have a, you know, I, I remarried for about a year when I was 41 and I had a fifth child. And now he's 12 and he's a wonderful blessing. So um, I, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm just so lucky. I'm so lucky. Great attitude. Where do you think you found the strength? Oh my gosh. Um, it's a few places. My love for my late husband, um, was one place because I didn't want his life to go, uh, unnoticed. Um, I didn't want to fail him, you know, and because these children were his legacy and myself included, I was his legacy and he was such a great man. Um, a great husband and father that I, I, I felt it took, I felt as if I needed to honor him through my work. Um, I also think I found it through grief because it, you know, turning lemons, you know, turning lemonade out of lemons was my way of coping. Um, I also needed to find myself. And I think that for a while, I mean, it definitely helped me find myself. And, you know, last but not least, I mean, honestly, God, I mean, I know there are moments throughout all of it where when I didn't know what to do, or I didn't know if I could go on, or if I, you know, I, I just put it in God's hands. And I, he always came through, even in moments when I really didn't think, oh, my God, I thought it was at my last, my last and he always came through. So um, I... From that, I um, I carry that forward, all those lessons forward. Um, I still work to that end, you know, because I, I feel like my entire life will be this man's legacy, not just my own. So I think you have commitments to people, right? When you make a marital commitment, especially, mm. and you love that person so deeply, you honor that commitment, whether they're here or not, in, in certain ways. Wow, Laura, that is, that is beautiful. I um, I can understand your you know you're wanting to do that, but also in how and I, I believe that your attitude that was there long before your marriage really came shining through. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I was you know I I have good parents. <laughs> 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 And you know parents. what else? I can see the joy in your laughter. That, that's <laughs> that's a, a real telltale sign. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Now I noticed that in your background, it said that you were a you are you are a children's television creator. Tell me about that. Oh my gosh! So that yeah, goes along with the story. So in in two thousand six, because now I have no fear, right? So yeah. <laughs> so in two thousand six, I decide that I want to take ideas that I created when I was a little girl covered in paper and turn them into a children's television series, really to teach children that even at the youngest of ages, they, they can find a way to help. And so, um, so I took these characters called the Wumblers and I dove headfirst into children's television. And um, so that series ended up not only um, 
playing in the Christian sector uh, in the United States, but also internationally and whatnot, not in the Christian sector and internationally. But um, I learned everything in that business. I learned licensing, branding, um, the legal aspects of it, retail, um, marketing, PR. And it was such an education. And, um, and I won like these major awards for this, for, for this first creation. I, I won the Forbes Enterprise Award. I won the Buzz Award. I won four tellies. I won, I mean, I was winning awards left and right. And I, 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 you know, I felt like, wow, for just running my headlong into something new, yeah. that was really impressive. But I think because I did it with a passion and I really connect I connected with the characters. I connect with children. You know, I, I also, in you know, earlier years, I taught a bit. Um, so, um, and I, I have a love for children. Um, so um, that was my first endeavor. And um, since that point, I created a book series, um, another book series called Jasper's Giant Imagination. That went um, to retail and publisher and then retail. And then it got picked up just within the last year by Amoeba TV up in Canada. And they, they decided to turn it into a read-along series for children. So that's happening. And wow. now we may, we just started actually yesterday, just talking with a television network in the UK who may be interested in turning it into a series, a, a television series. So we'll see where that goes. But, um, but, you know, it's a great character. And um, and again, it, it connects with children. But what it also does, I think, is um, it takes it's it, children always love personification. Right. So anything because their world is is very imaginative and creative. Right. So it, it takes personification to a new level. And it also teaches children how to communicate. We aren't just communicating. We're teaching how to communicate, which I think especially at this point in time is so vital yeah. when they've missed so much time in school teaching children that, you know, you have to fill in that gap now. So, so I'm hoping it does, you know, you know, run its course as far as that goes. Um, we'll see, but I, you know, yeah. So that's one of the things I did. Yeah. Now walk me through, you know, you're, you're a mom, you've got this idea for a, a, a children's book, I guess, to begin with, Mm -hmm. uh, what, what did you do? How did it, how did you get from, from A to Z? Huh. Well, you know, or what's funny is, <laughs> yeah. So that's an interesting question. Cause I sort of fell into the steps and that's why, you know, what I say about God, when I ask the question, when I ask the need, if for some reason it just shows up. And so, um, so one of my sons, one of my oldest son's friend's father was a, uh, he created music for Nickelodeon. And so um, I spoke with him about, hey, how do I do this? <laughs> and he helped me. He helped move me along and taught me the business. And, um, and so that was wonderful. He actually created music for, um, for the Wamblers. And, and so that was helpful. And it was just step by step. So I went from that to to finding the funding for a pilot and then the entire series. And from, from finding this funding, you know, created a company around it and there you go. So having had the business, the business knowledge from the tech companies that we owned and then I turned around, um, I brought that forward, all that, that knowledge forward into children's television. And so that's how, that's how I did it. You know, that's how I did it. You know, there's never a foolproof formula, right? There's a, there, we all start something by the seat of our pants, you know, and you can't be frightened to do that because you're only here for a short period of time. Right. So I think if you have a dream, what, what is it, you know, you have to figure out a way to make that come true, you know, cause you're not supposed to say at the end of your life, I should have tried. That's powerful right there. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, it's actually a Chinese proverb. The translator says, the work will show you how. So true. Yes, it will. It will. I'm involved in a new project right now. I'm going back to my tech roots. And this thing fell out of the sky. It actually fell into my lap out of a need, my own need. And um, 
And it was ridiculous though, because when I finally decided, hey, I am going to fill this need because I know if I have this need and I found that so many other people in my area have this need that so many other people across the nation must have this need. So I just like ran with it. And all of a sudden the right, you know, the, the right techna company showed up and, 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 you know, so I'm like, we're literally from soup to nuts. We're going to create this thing in about four months and bring it to market. That's amazing. I, right. That's so it's incredible. so true. Yeah. yeah, but you're right. <laughs> People do show up, but you, they it starts up. with your vision. Yeah. Once you have that vision, once you have that belief, all of a sudden. You have to decide on it. You have to decide, Hey, this is it. This is, you know, and, um, and then just go. And just, you know, find, figure it out along the way, because it will, it will figure itself out with you. Which brings us to the title of your book. <laughs> be, care, be careful what you wish for. Now, I really know this does. is a, a story. It's, an, it's a novel, but it kind of has that underlying theme, doesn't it? So here's where that title came from. Okay. So when I met my late husband, um, he was known th throughout our conversations going forward and certainly within the first two or three for saying to me, be careful what you wish for. And it was a lifelong, you know, statement of his. And every time he would say it, I thought to myself, oh, yeah, right. But it's so true. And so when I went to um, when I went to put the title on the book. There was no other title that seemed fitting because the story was all about that. And so, yeah, I think it's a great, you know, I really love the title. I don't know what else I would have called it had I not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it's interesting that, that you have uh, this talent, not only for, for writing, but here you are a children's television creator. You're writing children's books, et cetera. And now you write, this, this novel uh, that isn't a children's novel. Yeah. That's interesting that, that you have and you're able to make both work for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, you know, like I said, I think it's really, it's, I can't tell you how much I love connecting with people. And, and I can't tell you how much I love giving story to people. Because especially story that they can relate to, because everybody has commonalities in life. We all live. We all die. We all love. We all want love. Right. Um, we all we all have our own pain. So if you if you're able to capture that in words that they can identify with. Whether whatever stage they are in life. Um, I don't think there's anything better because you're giving people experiences. You're giving them memories. You're giving them opportunities to, for hope. You're giving them all these things. You know, I think that's so much better than, you know, that is the best gift you can give, give somebody. I mean, there are maybe, you know, according to our society standards, you know, diamonds, furs and, and, you know, a million dollars, the best thing that people can get, but I don't think so. I think that connection and story are, are right up there. I agree. And encouragement. Encouragement. Encouragement is the right and strength and courage and um and you know yeah just just sinking themselves into you know um a place that they forget where they are okay, for the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Laura, right now, so many people, um, you talk about hope. So many people, they look at their lives and they look at uh, what's going on in the world and they're feeling despondent. They're feeling hopeless yeah. and fearful. Yeah. Um, what would you say to them? I think those are co very common feelings and they're appropriate feelings, I think. But, you know, it's not the feelings that you need to concentrate on so much as who you are and handling them and what you're going to do with them because you cannot run from fear. I always 
tell my children, one in particular, you have to run into fear. You can't live by fear, right? So and there were many times throughout my journey that I was terrified. But the fact of the matter is I had no choice. I had to run into the fear. And in, when you run into the fear, that's where you find your life. So to run away from it, you become its captive, right? You need mm-hmm. to run into it to become its captor. And so that's what you, that's what people need to do today. Look, this is a terrible moment where, you know, virus and pandemic and fear and, um, and people are, you know, in strife with each other. And, you know, I think that it's very easy to fall into it and become consumed by it. But you're just giving away pieces of your time and you don't have enough to give away. No one has enough to give away. So you can't let it stop you. You have to you have to go out and continue to grab hold of your life. Love the people you want to love. If in moments you need to live in a bubble for two minutes, do that, too. But don't lose hope about life. Don't don't give in to the fear. So your life becomes about it. You know, use it to perpetuate you to do what you need to do and what you want to do in life. Use it. Let it become the power underneath your wings. I feel I am. Believe me, you're you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I believe that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wake up every morning. I can't I can't get up early enough. If I didn't have to sleep, I, I wouldn't because I, I think it's just it gets in the way. <laughs> well, I know how. you and I it's coordinating this interview was like tough because I you know how many meetings I've had to push off this week. <laughs> so right, I right. <laughs> I know. So where can we find your book? Well, you can certainly find it on Amazon. You can find it Barnes and Noble, you can find it Walmart.com. Um, the publisher, you know, you can buy it off the publisher too, which is Words Matter Publishing. So all of those places you can find it. As long as you have my name connected to it, I know you'll find it. And you can go to my website too. Um, so it's laurajwellington.com is what it is. Laurajwellington.com. Yeah. Uh, one last question. How do you stay motivated every single day? Um. I'm just, you know, on, quite honestly, I'm generally a happy person. I'm a good, you know, I'm a pretty calm. Again, I've become a lot calmer over the years. How does, I love what I do. I love what I do. That's really, that's, that's it. You know, and, and, you know, that's, I don't know how else to put it. I just love what I do. Uh, I'm there with you. Love what you do, <laughs> do what you love, and yeah. uh, everything will take care of itself. Yeah. You yeah. never work a day in your life, right? That's, that's exactly say. right. That's exactly that's right. That's true. Oh, well, Laura, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Congratulations on your success. We'll look forward to more of your uh, television endeavors. And I know that you have something really big, even bigger than has happened coming toward you just because you're willing to wish what you want and leave it in God's hands. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonny. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you and this interview. My pleasure. Well, That's my visit with Laura Wellington. What a delightful human being. You'll find links to more of Laura's joy, including how to get your copy of Be Careful What You Wish For by visiting SunnyRadio.com. That's SunnyRadio.com. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to my podcast so you don't miss a single episode. Until next time, I'm Sonny Melendrez, asking you to go find someone who's special in your life and tell them that you love them. Bye-bye. Love, love, love.